that, as I said, the nuclear area contains the genetic imprints for the offspring, for the next generations. And that's encoded in that nuclear area. And uh, there may be more, some deeper stuff, but, you know, I, I have to organize that in my thinking. But if the genetic information is from some other source, other than my own source of gene pool, then certainly that which is cloned is going to be biologically and probably otherwise different. So yes, I would think that that person would be different. This societal way of looking at cloning is more or less a conversation piece and not a scientific analysis of what really happens mm -hmm. in cloning. Mm -hmm. uh, when they clone like Dolly, they do take it from uh, uh, a bovine animal, meaning of that particular family of animals. In other words, they didn't take a snake's cells and put it into cells of a sheep. Mm -hmm. They take a uh, uh, related species and put those nuclei in, in the cases that we know about they may have tried other things and it didn't go anywhere and so it's not advertised but you you have to use the nuclear material from some related phylogenetically related species mm -hmm. in order to get the outcome of for example dolly or the mouse they did certain mice that way uh -huh. and they took certain cells cumulus cells and they uh, incorporated that into a enucleated cell, and they, they and they brought forth some some mice that are mm -hmm. now clones. But I'm saying that they use a phylogenetically similar cell, and they got you know mice, but those mice were different. They still fit on the category of mice because they have the form and the structure of a mouse. But phylogen, I mean, um, um, as far as their their, um, uh, uh, you know, habits and so on, they're going to be the same, similar rather. Mm. But so they are something that is specific and different from the original parent, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of, you know, their biological makeup and habits and so on. Uh, you know, I haven't worked around cloned animals, so I, I have to, I think if I observe the whole process, then I can be much more broad in what I've seen and can explain it more. Mm -hmm. But I have not worked with what they call transgenic mice, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or, or clones. Now, in terms of um, test tube babies, they, they're not cloned, but when you take the sperm and you freeze it, and then you use that sperm to fertilize an egg, um, is there seem to be something lost in that? I mean, would you think that the the test two children are the are they? Do you think they're missing something spiritually or something? Because once you freeze the sperm, I mean, that's you, you did something to yeah. the process. Yeah. So, what do you think happens? Yeah. 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 Let me give you something that's metaphysically deep with that thing of. of <clears throat> Of, of us, you know, reproduction and sexual intercourse. When man, male and female component and the female component come together through a process that's going to be necessary for a new offspring, I, I believe there's an energy and an essence that comes in the presence of those two people. Mm -hmm. And that energy and essence is seeking an incubator to develop itself in. It's not just having male, female lay down and do their business. I think that there is a, something seeking another uh, placement in an energy, seeking a spirit, seeking a placement to be carried through and incubated through, uh, uh, in this case, a female body, warm body. And that comes about around the two people when they're involved seeking this place. If she becomes pregnant, it finds a home. If not, it leaves and goes elsewhere. If people just do their sex just for the fun of it and so on, then there's no space for that. Mm -hmm. Then it moves on. So there's something deep there seeking this reservoir to develop itself in, to become. Mm -hmm. So I think when, when an embryo is formed, 
I think that it is a essence or a spirit that is that is uh, uh, becoming, but it needs the energy of the male, and it needs the the energy and and the incubation of the female. You see, when the man does his uh, uh, climactic event, it is a very forceful one, mm -hmm. and that force then acts as a syringe, injecting a certain essence into that female so that it can bombard her and maintain itself and develop into a new life if if that's how it's going to come come about mm -hmm. so uh, so is it different i mean what do you, how do you what do you see it i mean these children that come mm -hmm. out of a test to okay 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 yes i i do i do believe and, and so what do you think ultimately might be the results yes I, I i think they're missing something as i said they're missing that spiritual essence mm -hmm. that that has to do with the sum total of the that person's uh, behavior patterns and so on when they come in from an artificial environment called a test tube mm -hmm. and then the sperm itself i think loses some of its effectiveness meaning uh let's see how can i put that um um the, uh, when the sperm develops, it starts out as a black seed around the nucleus. There's mm -hmm. a black dot, that's a melanin dot, that starts to grow around the nucleus this way, enclosing the nucleus of a cell. Mm -hmm. And then it acquires a tail, and that becomes the sperm. The rest of the part that it doesn't need is cast off. Mm -hmm. So now it, it has enclosed its genetic information in its head, and then that, that particular genetic information enclosed in the head all of that process mm -hmm. has to go th it's a process that has to occur within the male mm -hmm. so if you take a sperm that has developed through that way and then freezes it you have in my way of thinking cut away part of that developmental essence that it has matured to become so it's less of that essence mm -hmm. and now you take that same uh, I put in quotes weakened essence or sperm mm -hmm. and then you put it in a, a cold cultural environment with a bunch of chemicals in a dish because you do have to put buffers there which is kind of stuff we wouldn't drink <laughs> and so that sperm and that egg has to survive in an artificial environment and then you look to see that the sperms penetrate the egg the membrane of the egg and get in and you can tell by a certain you know the microscope a certain kind of scope that, that has occurred. I do that all the time in embryology, mm -hmm. where we take the sperm and the egg from certain um, uh, uh, aquatic uh, uh, species, and we can watch the sperm swim and get through the membrane and go to the nucleus and fuse, and then that makes that new life, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that if you put, take it from its total warmth natural warmth, nourishment, energy, vibrations, and put it in an artificial, contained, stodgic, cold, cold in the way, well, not cold, but it's, it's cold. actually, when they put it in the petri dish, it's a certain, something close to body temperature, but I'm saying that they freeze the sperm first, uh -huh. so they've destroyed some of that essence that I'm talking about. Now they're going to take that sperm and put that with an egg which has been chemicalized to become an egg. In other words, in vitro fertilization is not a regular uh, um, egg that has gone through the natural oogenesis process or maturation. This is an egg that has been induced chemically to go through that process. With this, you inject a certain drug in the woman and then the ovary starts to make many eggs mature at the same time, whereas the natural way is to have one mature a month and come out. Mm -hmm. So when you give a particular chemical, you have induced about 15 eggs or cells to go through that developmental stage. And then you use a certain kind of syringe and so on, a laparoscopic technique, and you go in and you sort of suck it out into a syringe mm -hmm. and then you put that in the petri dish because remember the female ovum is the largest cell single cell in the body mm -hmm. you can see it as a little dot in a petri dish mm -hmm. it's about 200 micro 
molar and I mean micro uh, meters in size, micrometers in size. That's that's big for a cell, you know. So I'm saying then that these little that that egg has been induced, or several of them have been induced to mature to fullness. And then they are taken out with a certain kind of technique and put into a petri dish and the sperm either frozen or fresh from the male. A lot of times, in some cases, they're frozen and then taken and then put in the presence of this female egg so that they can make a new life in the test tube here. And then they put it in another energy source of what we call a surrogate mother that has a totally different kind of vibrational energy and biochemical mixture and so on for it to incubate in that. So there could be a lot of changes in the overall structural energy and so on of the offspring that comes out of that. Mm -hmm. so that's, you know, I'm just putting knowledge that I have together and making a hypothesis or a theory Mm -hmm. as to what I think happens, given certain knowledge that I have about, you know, what we study in embryology. Mm -hmm. So I think that, <clears throat> now Louise Brown is the one that we know about, was born in 1978, so it makes her about 20 years old, a little more than 20 years old now. And I'm not sure whether she has the capability of producing an offspring, I'm not sure. You know, I think before I say that 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 she can't, I need to look more into these things. And we would assume then that she was brought forth by in vitro fertilization. I think it can be done, you know. But, you know, a lot of things we hear, you know, we need to check them out if we can. You know, rather than accept them for what we hear them as face value. Mm -hmm. So, I know in the animal world, there's lots of evidence of of this kind of artificial insemination and other kinds of ways of producing animals. Mm 